I look like I drink eight glasses of water a day. I look like I get at least eight hours of sleep. I don't get either of those things, but in the end, you're still gonna be glamorous. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. So for today's eye look, I am obviously giving you a little sneak preview of Halloween. I was really trying to wait until October to start doing Halloween themed looks, but I just couldn't wait. Halloween gives me joy. It gives me just a little bit of serotonin, which I feel like I really need during these trying times that we're living in. I wanted to do something Halloween-y today, so I put sweet little jack-o'-lanterns on my eyes. I also, I don't know if you know, I have a little jack-o'-lantern that sits on my windowsill, and he watches all my videos, so just know that when you're watching me, so is Jack here. But that's not what this video is about. No, you did not click on this video to hear all about who's on my windowsill, and if you did, it's Jack, and it's also this sweet little cat right here. Isn't that so fun? No, you clicked on this video because you like me, have an interest in extra makeup steps that really make a difference. So I decided to make this video because I noticed that there are many makeup steps over the years that I have incorporated into my routine that I really feel like have amped up my makeup routine. They've really amplified my looks. They've definitely made my routine slightly longer, but at the same time, slightly easier. So I wanna just get that out of the way. These are not gonna be high maintenance things to do. They're not steps that are gonna add 30 minutes to your routine or anything. Thing. They're literally gonna add a few seconds and they're going to save you time in the long run because they will make the rest of your application easier. I'm sorry, I'm being very vague. I don't wanna give any of the steps away because then why would you keep watching? <laughs> so if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you wanna hear all about my extra makeup steps that really make a difference, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching. It's coming at you right now. Okay, so the first step I wanna to talk to you about, I feel like is the most important. If you take nothing else away from this video, I encourage you to please try this step, and that is skin prep. I definitely used to go right in with my foundation, you know, not put anything on underneath, just start slapping it on and getting right to town. But the more and more makeup videos I watched, the more and more research I did into having a good makeup routine, I realized that skin prep is so, so important. So obviously your skincare routine you should be doing every night, you know, cleansing, moisturizing, doing that whole thing. But I'm talking about skin prep like right before you do your makeup. So if you moisturize in the morning, that's great. You should. That's amazing. We love that. I don't do my makeup right away in the morning and I know a lot of people don't do their makeup as soon as they wake up. So I like to moisturize before I put my foundation on. I use this little CeraVe moisturizing cream. That is because I have super severely dry skin. If your skin is more oily, you can just put on like a light water cream or something. But I find that moisturizing before putting putting your foundation on just makes the foundation look better. No matter what kind of foundation I'm using too, because I use a lot of dewy foundations to begin with. My favorite is the Revlon Candid Glow. It's the one I always go back to, and it is a very serum-y foundation, but I do notice it looks better if I put it on over moisturizer. And if you prime, that's great too. I don't use primer all the time. When I do, I tend to use a hydrating primer, but even with the hydrating primer, I still like to moisturize beforehand, because I have yet to find a hydrating primer that is as hydrating as an actual moisturizer. So I like to moisturize first. I find that your foundation will go on smoother. You are much less likely to have dry patches. Again, I have severely dry skin, so dry patches are pretty unavoidable for me, but I definitely get the least amount of dry patches when I go in with a moisturizer first. Occasionally, I'll use a facial oil. That definitely changes the appearance of the foundation. It'll make the foundation look extra dewy, but I find if I just go in with a moisturizer, it doesn't change the appearance of the foundation at all. Like it's not gonna change your foundation from a matte finish to a dewy finish suddenly, but it is going to make it apply smoother, go on smoother, it'll be easier, and I don't get any pilling or anything when I use this particular moisturizer, so I definitely can vouch for the CeraVe moisturizing cream. And this is just a quick step. I keep this on my makeup desk so I can have this just for before my makeup, and I think it's an extra step that makes a huge difference in the way my foundation looks. Okay, so another step that I do to prep before I even start doing my makeup, so I got my moisturizer on, I'm all ready to do my foundation, but, 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 before I do my foundation, I like to go in with a lip oil, or it can be a lip balm, or a chapstick, whatever you have. It could even be a lip gloss, but I find that if I go in with my lip oil while I'm doing the rest of my face, by the time I get to the lips, my lips are prepped and ready to go. Even if you're just wearing a gloss, you should still put a lip oil or a lip balm on first. 
because I'm sure you've all had an experience or maybe you haven't in which case I'm jealous. I've had many experiences where I didn't moisturize my lips beforehand and I thought oh it's fine I'm just putting a lip gloss on and then you go to put your lip gloss on and you can see like little tiny cracks and little tiny bits of skin peeling off and it's uh it's not a look I like to rock very often so I'm always grateful when I remember to do my lip oil first especially with lipstick especially with liquid lipstick if you're wearing any sort of matte finish lipstick I 100% recommend doing a lip balm while you start your makeup because if it's still a little sticky by the time you get to your lipstick just take a little paper towel wipe off some of it but I find that I take a pretty long time to do my makeup so if my lip oil has at least a half hour or so to set by the time I get around to putting on my final lip it's pretty much sunk into my lips and my lips are hydrated and they're plumped I have a minty one here so it does a little bit of plumping and they're ready to have lipstick put on and I just find that that's another little step quick and easy and it definitely makes all the difference so alrighty do you like that this is like the TikTok transition you know the kids come in and they go ooh, and then suddenly like their faces change moving on to the next step Ooh, gonna make you dizzy sorry about that so the next step that is an extra step in my makeup routine that I think makes all the difference is not even really extra it's just changing the order so I learned this one from Jackie Ina she recommended that you put a liquid highlight under your foundation to give you that glow from within look well since she said that I have not stopped doing it and I love the way it makes my skin look so the highlight that I love to do it with is the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter for all it was superstar youth glow I talk about it all the time it's probably my favorite luxury item that I own because I just love that it comes in more foundation colors and it just really looks like a glow from within however I do have a dupe if you don't want to get this it's $44 I would very much understand if you did not want to get this elf makes a liquid highlighter that has vitamin E in it that is three or four dollars and I think it looks very similar it's definitely a little more oily but it's a liquid highlighter you know any liquid highlighter that you have will do I find they all work pretty much the same so what I do is I put it on before I put on my foundation and then let it dry for a second you gotta give it a second to dry so it doesn't go around everywhere and then go over it with your foundation and it literally it just glows from under your skin and I find that when I put highlighter on you know in the the typical order that most people would when I put it on like after my bronzer and blush I sometimes find that the highlight can cover up part of my blush and bronzer and sometimes I'll end up with more of a stripe sort of situation or it can take away product doesn't always happen you know it's definitely gonna vary product to product but I find every time I put it on under my foundation it just it looks beautiful it doesn't look like you're wearing highlight it really just looks like you have very fresh glowy skin I look like I drink eight glasses of water a day I look like I get at least eight hours of sleep I don't get either of those things but when I wear my highlight under my foundation it certainly looks like I do so that is an extra step that I would absolutely recommend that you add into your routine and again it's not even extra it's just switching the order all of these products are not really all that extra they're just about you know reimagining the way you do your makeup routine and I really think they make a difference alrighty let's talk about some lips and also some blush I don't remember where I learned this trick from probably Katie Jane Hughes but I have been really into lately wearing lipstick as blush one it greatly expands your options for blush colors because I have quite a few blushes but you know they're all not too different in tone I'm trying to expand my range but you open yourself up to so many more possibilities when you start wearing lipstick as blush because one lipstick tends to be cheaper than blush so not all the time but most of the time especially at the drugstore and it just it gives you so many more color options like I have so many more different colored lipsticks than I do blushes is what I'm getting at here you'll probably notice that I'm wearing orange blush today it is my Fenty Beauty Mademoiselle lipstick in the shade Saucy she is the color of fall we love her so much she's on sale for half off at Sephora right now but I have been loving this orange lipstick and I love wearing it as blush and it's a matte formula too and it still works really well as blush if you have a lipstick that you feel like is not gonna blend as well on your cheeks just take a little moisturizer mix them together on the back of your hand do a little pop 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 and then suddenly you have a beautiful blush look and I really like to sometimes wear the same color lipstick that I'm gonna wear on my lips as I do on my cheeks I find that that really ties the look together it makes it look very cohesive someone's gonna be looking at you and they're not gonna know what it is about you that makes you look so 
so glamorous, but they're gonna know that you're glamorous, and I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's your blush is lipstick, and your lipstick is blush. That's what it is. That's what's making you so glamorous. And it's your sparkling personality, of course. But I just really like how it ties the look together. I am wearing this lipstick on my lips today. I tried wearing it just as the orange lip. Honestly, I felt like it was a little much with the shirt and the clips and the eyeliner. So I ended up going over it with this NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Madeline, which is like my perfect nude. So I'm giving you a bit of a nudie orange moment. But yeah, I love wearing lipstick as blush. And I also like wearing blush as lipstick. So I know that this is a lipstick that I'm wearing as blush, but I've also really been into using my Rare Beauty liquid blush as both a lipstick and as blush. I'll insert a photo here. I did like a very monochromatic look where I actually wore this on my eyelids and on my cheeks and on my lips. I am such a huge advocate for just putting things on your eyes, lips, and cheeks, even if they're not intended to. Obviously, you wanna check and make sure something's not going to stain, but I use an oil cleanser, so I find that I can usually get anything off, except for those ColourPop stamps. Those ColourPop stamps won't come off for at least two days, but I find that most products are pretty easy to get off. But yeah, just because something's called a lipstick, you don't have to use it as a lipstick. I just think of things as cream products, or liquid products, or powder products, and then I just put them them wherever I want to put them and that has greatly expanded my range of makeup products that I have you know and it keeps things exciting too. put things on your eyes that are supposed to go on your cheeks and put things on your cheeks that are supposed to go on your lips and put things on your lips that are supposed to go in your eyes who's telling you what to do I'm not the boss of you no one is the boss of you you are the boss of yourself and you should do whatever you want with your makeup okay so the last extra step in my makeup routine that I really think makes a difference is probably the most actually extra step so you know but if you don't want to do it, that's fine. You don't have to do any of these things. But I really do think it makes a difference when I heat up my lash curler. And I will show you why I think it makes a difference. So here is a picture of me from earlier, not wearing any makeup. But on this eye, I curled my lashes just regular with the lash curler. And on this eye, I heated it up first. And... I, I really hope you can see a difference because I could feel it in real life. My eyelashes aren't decently long. They're not super, super long or anything, but they're not very curled. Like, they, they're pretty straight. It, it wouldn't look like I had very long eyelashes because they're not naturally very curled. So I love curling my eyelashes, but I find that when I do it just regular, not heated up, one, I don't get as dramatic of a curl. I mean, you can see right here. This is right after doing it. I definitely don't get as a dramatic of a curl when I don't heat it up. But another thing I love about heating up your lash curler is that it makes the curl last longer. So I finished my makeup probably around a half hour ago, and this eye is the one that I didn't heat up the lash curler for, and this one is the eye that I did heat up the lash curler for, and take a look at the difference. Is that too up close and personal? Sorry. With the lash curler heated up, look at how curled they are. They're like touching. They're like touching up here. And this eye, they're still decently curled, you know, but you can definitely see it's not as dramatic. Like, this is a dramatic curl. This is not as dramatic of a curl. Do I sound silly? Do I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about? Are you looking at me like, mm, I don't really see a difference, but trust me, the when you heat up your lash curler, the curl will last better throughout the day. It's very dramatic looking. Sometimes when I don't have time to put on makeup at all and I'm just like running out the door or something and I have like 30 seconds when my boyfriend's using the bathroom, I'll run over to my little makeup desk and I'll heat up my little lash curler and I'll just curl those lashes real quick. And honestly, it just, it makes me feel sweet. It makes me feel glamorous right before I run out the door and I know it's extra. I know it's a lot to do. I know you got to go out and buy a lighter, but you probably have a lighter. You light candles, right? That's the only thing you do with a lighter. Okay, cool. Oh my god, I should put out a disclaimer that if you were under 18, please don't operate a lighter without parental consent. And also, after you heat up your lash curler, please wait like a solid 30 seconds before going into your eye and always test it first. Do one of these before you go on. Because if you go right onto your lashes right after you heat it up with the lighter, you're going to burn yourself. And I don't want you to do that. I don't want to be responsible for you hurting yourself. And also, I just don't want you to hurt yourself. So please wait a minute. Wait 30 seconds before you go in on your lashes. And always do a little finger test first. Um, and that'll make all the difference. And make it safe. Safety first. Glamour second. It's hard for me to say that because it feels like glamour should be first. But safety has to be first. Glamour comes second. But in the end, you're still going to be glamorous. So it's all all good. All right, and with that, friends, we have reached the end of the video. I'm, I'm all hands lately. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the spooky season. I'm always, like, casting spells on the camera. But, uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. Those are all of the extra steps in my makeup routine that I think really make a difference. I know that lash curler one is probably the most extra. The rest of them are literally just, like, two seconds 
and or just switching something in your makeup routine or using your makeup a little different than you would have thunk. But I just feel like I don't always hear people talk about these things in makeup tutorials, which is maybe me just not watching the right makeup tutorials, but I wanted to spread the good word to you because I really do feel like skin prep is super important. Prepping your lips makes a huge difference. The highlight, oh, the highlight, look at her. Look at her, she's glowing from within. She's so healthy, she drank a green juice for breakfast. I didn't, I didn't have breakfast this morning and I drank like six cups of coffee, but it certainly looks like I am more hydrated than I am. And the lipstick is blush, you know, just using makeup in a way that you wouldn't normally think to use. And yeah, the lash curler, lash curler's a little extra, but look at these lashes, look at these lashes. Oh, they're so curled, we love it, we love it, we love it. Um, Jack, get over here, let's do the outro together. So I thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Yes, it's our channel now, it's my channel and my jack-o'-lanterns. Be sure to check out my description box for everything I'm wearing on my face today, as well as a ton of Black Lives Matter resources, including petitions to sign, places to donate, and ways to help protesters. I'm also going to single out at the top Louisville Mutual Aid Fund for you to donate to if you are able to, and also a link to register to vote, which is super important because deadlines are coming up, so definitely make sure you check that out if you live in the United States. I thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!